What is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Isaiah King. We're here with the first installment of Cigars and Sneakers, a new podcast where I'm bringing sneakers and cigars, and we're going to be doing a lot of talking about business, sneakers, and everything else. So I'm today joined by my friend, Blaine, a.k.a. Shop Crispy Kicks on Instagram. He is joining us. He is a beginner reseller. We're going to go over a bunch of stuff that has to do with his business, uh, finances, help him get from point A and go to the point B very quickly and elevate to the next level. First, before we do that, we're going to go ahead and light up some stogies. This guy has never smoked a cigar before, so we're going to start. Pull yours out. We're smoking Romeo and Julieta 1875 cigars today. Not my favorite in the whole world. I, I smoked one of these last week, but they're not too bad either. So first, what you're going to do is we're going to cut the tip of the cigar with this here. Yeah. Boom. So go ahead and chop yours off. Hey, John. Yo. Do you remember if our mouth goes on the end that we cut or on the other end? The mouth goes on the end that you cut, but don't cut too much of it. Okay. Good? Yep. Like, like not even the whole, you want to go on cool. the thinner end. All right. So the way that you want to light this puppy is, I don't think this one's going to work. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so when you're lighting it, you have to pull while you do it, but you don't want to inhale. So imagine you're just filling your mouth, so fill your mouth up, and then as you're doing it, you're going to let it out of your mouth. So, so what? Just first, you want to kind of light this outside of it. Taste a little bit of it. Make sure you're not inhaling that. Just pull into your mouth. Look. Woo! Like you're sucking on titties. Sucking on a bad nipple. It's, it's not even on. It. Here, put it up to your mouth. <laughs> Got it? You gotta pull it in, look. But don't inhale, only to your mouth. Yeah, pull it in your mouth. Yeah. Just suck it like a dick. <laughs> No, like literally sucking like a dick. <laughs> Why would you know about that? <laughs> Get your boy over here. <laughs> I don't know if this is cut out for me. You got it. Come on. John's going to get it going for you. Yeah, well, y'all do this on a special occasion every day. There we go. Oh. Big John behind the camera <laughs> here to support the technical difficulties. All right, so look, you just want to look for like four seconds. You fill it in your mouth. You just kind of let it fall out. Keep your mouth, your throat closed. Pull it though. Pull, pull that bitch. Like. But don't pull it yeah. in your throat. Yeah, why don't you go to your phone and you just, you hit me with the questions okay. you're looking to get answered. Okay. And we'll go from there. So I'm going to start, I'm kind of going to start with just sneakerhead in total. Do you think the actual love for sneakers is kind of dead? Or I'm going to stop you there. I want to answer questions that are going to help you. So skip the sneakerhead okay. questions. Go to the questions that specifically apply to you so that we can help you out and add some value to you and the people watching the video. Let me, let me hear those questions. So, damn, I can't smoke this shit for things. Um, so how do you on a – so I work at Chick-fil-A as kind of like the – get my money through this okay so how would you say i guess re so i guess recycle take a little bit out of each paycheck put it into another account and kind of just recycle through that money for sneakers okay here's what i did because i kind of have a little bit of trouble trying to keep my personal money away from reselling money and then i kind of get me well low in the that, money. that's just it's just like <laughs> sorry we just take it. it from me i don't no, want to fix it up for you because it's running a little bit I don't want it. You don't want it? No, I do. I can't. I can't smoke them things. Why not? I suck at them. <laughs> it's not. It's not a thing you suck. All right, Big John's gonna puff it for you. Then. All right, you have it. Um, okay. So here's what I did. What I I had a job for two years. I worked at the shoe cleaning kiosk in the mall. Mm -hmm. I was cleaning shoes. Pretty much what I did, and it, and it really depends, man, because it depends on what you want. So do you want to have a lot of money to spend on personal shit throughout the week? Do you want to have money to buy? Shoes, do you have money to buy fucking clothes and go to the club and fucking do all this? If that's the case, then it's a different conversation on how you should budget your money. So first we have to find out what do you, like what do you want, do you want to go all in 
money wise on sneakers? Do you want to have a balance where you have enough money to spend on bullshit, whatever you want throughout the week? And then so you know, for me, I kind of for me because I know you go every week weekend. You go to Chicago, Orlando, Tampa. You name it, you're there. You saw me down in Atlanta in February for the sneaker exit, and I bought 25 pairs with 4K. That kind of just buying left and right, that kind of stuff is what I want to do. Okay. I don't really care about going out to clubs, strip clubs, you name it. Okay, so do you know how much your bills cost every month? Uh, I spend, well, right now I still live with my parents. Okay. Okay. Uh, right now, I spend about roughly three hundred dollars on my car payment, and then one twenty on car insurance. Okay, let's Nothing round it up. Else. Let's round it up to six hundred bucks. Okay, because you got extra shit in there. You got to eat. You know what I mean? There's other yeah. stuff. I know your parents cook probably, but yeah. Okay, let's say it's six hundred bucks a month. Automatically off rip, you need to be pulling six hundred bucks a month from your paycheck, putting it into your personal account, so you've got that money there. Okay. Okay, so you can make sure you pay your bills. Whatever's left, you have an option. You can either say, okay, I'm gonna take all this money. Let's say, I don't know, I'm spitballing here. Let's say you got 800 bucks left, right? You can say, I'm either gonna take all this money and put it right into reselling. I'm gonna buy inventory with this. Or you can say, actually, I wanna start a savings account. That's so what I wanna do. I wanna build my savings account. So if like, say, personal emergency or something like that, or just something crazy I need to, like, just build it up every time so I'm not stuck with the right. no money. So then say, let's say we're going to put 600 in your personal savings. We're going to take 150 bucks, or your personal account, and we're going to take 150 bucks and put it into your savings. Then whatever's left, I think you should buy inventory with okay. and, and start flipping that and making more money and more money and compounding it. And then every time you get your check, you pay your bills, you pay your savings account, and then whatever's left, you throw that back into sneakers. And then you keep compounding that and growing that. Okay. While you're growing, while you're adding capital, your capital should also be working for you. So you need to keep track every month. Okay, well, I've got you know a thousand dollars worth of shoes right now. How much am I? It, the next month I, I need to have fifteen hundred bucks worth of shoes. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I need to be. Fl- I need to make. So a basically, it's kind of like because I use Regions, and then I have another different bank that I use for this. Yeah. So there we go. Basically, what I've been doing is I've been just cycling, recycling the same money. So when I had the uh, Valentine's Day twenty fourteen, I don't know if you saw that. Okay. I bought those for two ten, flipped them for two eighty, and then I took about three hundred dollars and went and bought about four pairs. I bought Gatorade uh, sixes, Michigan fives, and all that kind of stuff that like stuff that you would love. Flipped it for probably forty fifty bucks same day, so made about maybe thirty sometime somewhere okay. in there. And I f- sold it to a shop. Same day, made about 180 bucks within two hours. Okay, so that's what we need to be doing. We're working Chick Fil A. We're bringing, we're adding whatever amount we're having left over into the into the shoe business, and then we need to be. You need to be doing that every day though, and you need to set yourself some goals. Like, are you able to buy those pairs and do that every single day? I probably could, yeah. Okay, so we need to start doing that. So what? And what was the exact question? So, how to manage personal money when reselling? Okay. I, and that's exact answers your question there. We need to take some money aside, know exactly how much our bills are, and add a little bit extra. Yeah, because I get paid every two weeks. I get paid uh, roughly seven eighty to eight forty. Okay, like so that. you got like fifteen hundred bucks a month. Then. Yeah. So when we're taking six hundred, putting that in your pocket, that's for you to pay your bills. We're taking another one fifty, that's for your savings account, and then whatever's left over, we're putting into shoes. Okay. Okay. What's your next question? You got. And then. Um, Let's see. This stove is burning good. Can we talk about lighting? <laughs> um, so should when uh, reselling, should I use credit or debit when paying for shoes? And I know you were you wanted me to save this one. Big John, what's the answer to this question? <laughs> Fuck no! We are not using <laughs> credit. credit. Fuck credit, bro. A lot of people watching this are gonna disagree with this, but I believe that, and, and I think it's, at a certain extent you can use credit. I think once you get to a certain level, like I feel like at the level I'm at now, I feel like there are instances where it makes sense to use some credit. Top level, to use top some debt. G. Top G status. But I think that when you're starting out, there's a little bit of like a, an equation where I think you're, the amount of money you have mm. is equivalent to the amount of knowledge you have. So if I gave you 50 grand, and I said, Blaine, I want you to go buy a bunch of shoes and I want you to flip them. Do you think you'd probably buy some shit you shouldn't? You'd probably make some purchases that you shouldn't have made. 
Probably. you don't have the experience to sell 50 grand worth of shoes, right? Probably not. I like, mean, if you went and bought 50 grand worth of shoes, would you be able to sell them in a month? Probably not. No. In, a, in a week? No. I, when I sold you the, those 42 pairs a while back, I was sitting on a good amount of those, and that's the problem I've been having is because I can buy all the shoes in the world. I just can't flip them at right. a fast extent or rate. And we're going to get there. But first, I want to say... So can you agree that the amount of capital you have is a little bit equivalent to the amount of knowledge you have? For example, when I started out and I had no money, I didn't have any knowledge. But every time I made another flip and I gained another customer and I made money from those flips, it gave me the knowledge to use that money, right? Yeah. So if somebody gave me a million dollars and told me to go open a sneaker shop right now, I could probably do it, but there's a, there's a gap between the amount of knowledge I have and the amount of money I have at that point. I think when you get to a certain level, though, it starts to even out because at some point... Large money is large money no matter what, but when you're starting out, you don't have the experience, the knowledge, the clientele to use the money that you were going to borrow from the bank, right? Yeah. And that's where the problem comes in because now that's not your money. The buyer is slave to the lender. That's not your money now. Now you are using someone else's money. If you can't pay them back, if you fuck up and you buy, let's say you borrow, what, how much, like two grand from, let's say you two grand. Two grand. Two grand. You go buy two grand worth of shit, market crashes, you can't move the shoes, you need the money for something else. You sell all the shoes for fifteen hundred bucks. You need the money for something too. Yeah. You're paying your bills now, and you don't have any. Now you owe the bank two grand. Yeah. And you only got a thousand left, because you sold them for fifteen hundred and you needed the five hundred bucks for bills. Now yeah. you got a thousand left. Now you owe the bank a thousand. You're fucked. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you can't go borrow more, because now you're already in a hole. You don't want to dig a deeper hole. Yeah. So what I, my advice would be, head down, work your job, get the money from the job instead of the bank. Be responsible with your money and use your own money. Do not use credit. When you get to a certain point, I think it makes sense. And like, for example, I'm going to probably get a credit card soon for my travel expenses, for my yeah. hotels, for my shit like that, when I buy gas, because it's going to help build my credit score so I can purchase a home. Yeah. But in your case, you don't need it to buy capital, because the knowledge you have is tied to the amount of capital you have. Yeah. See what I mean? Yeah. All right. Hit me with your next question. Uh... So one of the, I, I have a question on here and it's kind of going into you. Okay. So when did you realize um, that you were going to make this an everyday job for you and you could leave cleaning sneakers at the mall? When they started backing the fucking Brinks trucks up <laughs> okay. in this house. That's when they fucking realized. So it. I will say, I almost quit a few times, like selling like, shoes. Like, yeah, I've, I, I've been there before because they, like the three months where I was not posting shoes, I was... Every day, Joe. And because my job, we shut down for three months for a renovation. I had $700 coming in, same amount as I'm always making, but I had nothing to do. So, and I wanted, I had to eat. I had nothing to keep me busy. Working at Chick-fil-A keeps me busy, so I'm not spending so much money on my personal stuff, like food, gas, that kind of stuff. Okay. So, but when, during that three-month renovation, I was spending money left and right. Okay. I'm going to tell you something, a little story real quick. <laughs> I hope they can hear Big John behind the camera on this one. That'll be, the, that'll um, be great. So, I... Like, how long into re... Like, bro, I mean, I've been doing it since I was 14. I didn't make it my full-time job until I was, you think, 17 or 18? Okay, look, honestly, shit didn't start taking off big until COVID happened is when shit started taking off. I would say 18. 18. 18. So, that was four years that I worked a job or like did little shit and mm -hmm. made other money elsewhere mm -hmm. before I could even do this full time. Yeah. It shouldn't even be in your scope right now. Okay. Until okay, until you're making like twice as much as your bills every month mm -hmm. profit, which shouldn't take you long. Okay. Because you need to be making you can't just make enough to pay your bills because then that means you're not making enough extra to grow and put more capital into it. Okay, so you have to make like twice as much as your bills and then you can you can start to think about it, you can consider it. But I think, I think working a job, I, the things I learned working a job before I started selling shoes was my game changer. I learned how to talk to people. I learned sales, I, everything. I mean, it, it taught me so much. Networking, business, like I learned so much from working my job. I think working a job is the biggest asset you can have before you start your own business. Because when you learn how to run somebody else's business, when you learn how to help, when you learn how to be an employee, it teaches you how to be a boss. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you can learn how to work all the way up to the top and then you become a boss, that's how you need to do it. Yeah. I wouldn't even think about starting, quitting your job until you're making, until it's taking away from the money that you make selling shoes. So for example. So like basically you'll realize it. You'll know. 
You know what I mean? You'll yeah. like okay, for I didn't go to college. And this isn't the job thing, but it's like an analogy. But when I was in business class, I was going and taking bathroom breaks to go to the parking lot and sell shoes. So that's when I and, and, and in business class they're talking about vocab words yeah. like what's net margin, what's net profit. I'm learning more, watching content online, consuming content, reading books, going out and selling shoes in the parking lot. I knew that college didn't make sense for me. Yeah. Same thing with the job. When you're like, okay, I'm not learning anymore at this job. So maybe either it's time to do this full time or get another job that I can learn more at. Yeah. Or I'm making so much selling shoes, it's a fucking waste of my time to be at this job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You'll know. But don't rush it because the number one asset you have is your income. That's yeah. your asset. You can get your own house. You can pay bills. You can add capital to your business to grow it. Adding capital to your business is the fuel on the fire. So don't quit your job anytime soon. You'll know when the time comes. Okay. Okay. What you got and else? What else you got for me? And does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense to me. Okay. Make uh, sure you, make sure you can answer his questions. If you still have questions after he answers the questions, if yeah. You and if you want to go stuff, off of those and you have any other, still yeah. About something, keep asking. Let's see. You need clarification. Look at the fucking ass on that. If the ass is good. You got a big dick. That's what I'm <laughs> Look at that. Get your man's eh? Uh, so. God, man, I'm trying to find all these. Uh. Um, While we're waiting, everyone, fucking check out Sneakers by Isaiah King on eBay. We got fucking 350 pairs on there. Go look through them. I guess I can go with this one. Um, you had a lot of good questions on there. So yeah. Pick some shit up because okay. you had a lot of good We're going to go with how is it easier for you to get more steals? Because a lot of people, when they start out, they say one. somebody starts out today. They may be able to get... 200 followers within two weeks, something like that. Maybe, hey, hey, I have Cool Gray 11s used for 280. That's not enough room to make profit because that shoe's going to 40, 250 used. When, like, is it, is it more events that you go to or is it just your name that people are like, oh, I can sell to him? Okay, well, I started off, I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna only correlate, I'm gonna only give you answers that correlate the position I was in back in the day that is that's, equivalent to yours. That's okay? fine. Because I don't want to tell you how I do it now because the, the strategies I use now are different than the ones you're going to be able to use, yeah. right? Because I've been doing it for longer. So when I started out, I'm on Facebook Marketplace. I'm on Facebook Groups, Kicks into Cola. Shout out Dustin Campbell, the OG. Sold me my first pair of J's. Um, Kicks into Cola, Facebook Groups. I'm, on, I'm blowing my Snapchat up. I'm blowing my Instagram up. Every day I'm, I'm handing out business cards. Okay, you're not in school anymore, are you? Nope. When I'm at school, I'm at the football games with a little fucking stand, handing out business cards, showing off my product. And I'm doing that. I'm going to Plato's Closet. I'm going everywhere. Thrift okay? Stores. Thrift stores. You have, we have. And Plato's Closet is a really good place because I, I remember when I went to Mobile and I grabbed Red 13s, Core Purple 13s, and Jim Red 12s there, I was surprised out of my mind to see those. Right. And so another asset you have that I didn't have when I, I did, but it was kind of shitty. But you have plenty of sneaker shops here now. Yeah. We've got, you got two Coastal Kicks near you. You've got a Woken Kicks. Um, there's one more shitty, oh, Heat wave. don't say that. No. No free promo. No free promo. <laughs> there's a couple other shops. Some of them are, are awesome. Some of them aren't awesome. But you've got all these shops. The, I don't even bank on the local shops anymore. But the fact you're starting out in your smaller level, you should be hitting these fucking shops like once a week. Going in there, making the connections, being like, hey, I need shoes. I'll pay good on used. I'll pay what like sell me some good stuff. Sell me some steals. Every week you should be going in these shops, making the connections. Yeah. Every week there's pressure. Two coastal kicks, awoken kicks, heat wave. There's one more in Panama City. Um, oh yeah, all day sneakers is what it's called. Pa Panhandle's about to open up in Pensacola. Yeah, I'll, I'm I got ready that for one that unlocked. One. Shout out Panhandle. Kicks. Shout out Panhandle kicks. But you need to be locking down these shops. Because I, I didn't have that when I was starting out. You've got shops everywhere now. You need to be yeah. hitting them every day, going there, looking for pairs, looking for deals. On Facebook. You, do you have a Facebook? I do. On Every day on Facebook. You know how many pairs and collections I bought? Because people saw, like, like your mom's friend will mm -hmm. see your post. I'm buying you sneakers. She'll go, hey, Jared, aren't you selling a bunch of your old Jordans? Yeah, I am, actually. Well, look, this kid on my Facebook is... I had a lady... Her ex-boyfriend got locked up and sent to jail. Somebody sent her my post that I was buying shoes, and I bought a 50-pair cash-out off of her. One of the pairs I bought was a Dornbecker 6 for $100. I sold it for $12.50 the same day. Damn. 
Another example, I was in the Mobile sneaker group. I'm buying shoes, I'm looking to buy, I'm looking to buy. This guy hits me up. This is when I was just starting out. I used every single dollar I had to my name. And I bought 140 pairs for seven grand. I sold them all in one day for $14,000. I mean, uh, seven grand in one day. You're not gonna get those kind of deals every time. No. But if you keep putting yourself out there, creating a brand, you know what a brand is? Yes. Okay, what is a brand? Like, what do you think when you think of brand? Like, what you represent for yourself. And sure, like, like, you need people to know, like, this is Blaine, this is what he does, he's looking to buy, he's always buying, you just need to be consistent, I'm always, I'm always buying used, I'm always looking for shoes, I need to be on every social media platform. You got a Snapchat? I do. Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, everything. Everything, you need to be everywhere. That's how you're gonna get deals. That's how you're gonna find these collections because you gotta think, bro, I'm not in the city like that anymore cashing out. I'm out of town every week. Yeah. You have opportunity in all these areas to be cashing the fuck out because yeah. you don't have any competition now. No. And everybody's buying DS. No free promo. Thank you, bro. No free promo. <laughs> no free promo. Big John behind the camera stays repping us. No free promo. Even back here with the line. You need to be, <laughs> I'm gonna fucking, I like the no free promos thing. That's I like great. that. So you need to be everywhere, bro. And you need to be professional, right? So when you have your Snapchat from now on, we're not posting like- And see, let me stop you right there. Okay. So I will say that about being professional. Chick-fil-A has taught me a way of how to talk to people, to be nice to them yeah. and not be a dick. My pleasure. Right. right. And so how long is the camera going? How long has it been rolling? Right, 22. Okay. You need to be everywhere. Yeah. You need to create a brand for yourself and be professional. So when you're on your Snapchat, you don't need to post a fucking like shitty looking stupid photo of you. When you're on your Instagram, you don't need to be talking bullshit, reposting dumb shit. It needs to be all about the brand, about the business, about I'm buying. You need to be creating content, reminding people every single morning. Guys, I'm, I'm here, I'm in Panama City today. I'm looking to cash out on sneakers. What do y'all got for me? If you do that, one person's gonna hit you up. They might not that day, but the next day they're gonna, and then you're gonna buy shoes from them. And then they're gonna go, oh, you know what? I actually have 10 more pairs I wanna sell. I'm gonna hit you up next week. Okay, I got you. Moral of the story is you need to be on every platform, every store, every opportunity you have because right now you can't afford to go to these events every day, right? No. But you're you're surrounded by hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah. And if there's sneaker shops that can be supporting themselves, that means the people have shoes. They want shoes. They're there. You just have to find them. Yeah. Create a brand, get on social media, and post every single day on every platform. Okay. What else you got for me? Uh, do you think resellers are pushing to open stores even though they aren't ready and financially? I think that a store is a good idea for some people, for certain instances. I think there are resellers that open a store too early, um, but it just depends on what a store means to you, right? So if in your head a store is like, I mean, wouldn't you like to have a store? I'd like to have a store with thousands of shoes. Right, and, thousands. I, and I agree with that. But I think a lot of things, there's a lot of ego to it, right? So people want to open a store because it's cool to open a store. Yeah. You tell your mom you have a store, you tell your friends you have a store, it's cool. I think there is people opening them very, very early. Prematurely, a little bit too soon than they should be. Like Not gonna say any names. Okay. But I think also at the end of the day, it's like that's their choice and I think like, like no free promo, but I'll drop a name, Coastal Kicks. Honestly, when they opened their first shop in Fort Walton, I thought it was a stupid idea. I thought they were doing it too soon, they didn't have enough inventory, I didn't think they had enough capital, but since then, they, had, they took a, a hole in the wall store, not that it was shitty, but it was just in a random location, no current followers. They opened it, they had no sales, they had no clientele. They were not pretty much resellers, they kind of were, but they weren't. And now they have two locations. I know their sales that they're doing somewhat, I know people that know them. They're doing fucking numbers. Yeah. They are doing well. They're and doing so really it's, good. it's like also, it's like, well maybe you fucking take the risk and you open the shop and you see where it goes, right? Maybe you do it a little prematurely, you jump in. And then you fucking kill it. Yeah, because from what I when I first walked in there, it seemed like they've built from the ground up like crazy. They've done well. They they're no free promo, but they've done well. Yeah. And they've been killing it. And I have to give props where props are due. Yeah. They're fucking killing it. And so, like, and we'll, we'll give another. Oh, that shit's fucking. That shit's burning sweet. No, I don't need a lighter. Oh, you don't need. That one? puppy's burning though. <laughs> um, but for uh, let's let's look at the flip side of that, right? So Panhandle Kicks, you know him. Yeah. Yeah. Shame. He's got. Potentially, I think probably more inventory than both of their stores combined, and he doesn't have a shop yet, because he's had the mentality of like, I want to do it right. I want to make sure I, I it's, I, he wants to make sure it's 100% the day he opens. 
Whereas another person might say, let's get it, let's get it open and then we'll grow to 100%. That was the route that Coastal Cakes took. And I think they're doing great now. Yeah. They're killing it. Shane wants to wait and get it at 100% when he opens, and that's fine too. That's, that's so perfectly I think fine. it just depends on what you want, what your goals are, what your financials look like. But I, I do think there's some opening prematurely, but people want sneakers, so fuck it. Open a shop if you want to open a shop. It's not my route. It's not my destiny, but I'm for it. If you're, if it if works, you're willing it to do it, more power to you. Like I agree with that. Uh, all over your opponent's head. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it, bro. I'm cleaning it up, though. Uh, let's see. Uh, Blaine, I'm a little disappointed you're not smoking a stogie with me right now. Well, I'm I, not going to fucking lie, bro. Uh, and look how pretty that thing's ashing. Let's see. Um, do you think now that sneakers are at an all time, well, not right now, currently, but ever since maybe 20. Like basically, when sneakers started like reselling, when StockX and everything came out, do you think the sneaker game is like really dangerous, or is it just like places that you go? What do you like, mean by dangerous? Like people will pull a gun on you. I mean, and all that kind of stuff. Because I seen um, one of my friends who moved away. He got. You mean by dangerous? Like you see a guy like me, and you're like, he just looks dangerous. Is no, I mean, no dangerous. I mean, no, I mean like, like somebody, me somebody's think, gonna rob you and try and kill you for your shit. No, I think what you're saying is you see a guy like you or me and they think, that's a tall drink of water, I hope I don't drown. <laughs> is that what you mean by that? Nope. They look at you and they go, that guy right there, I wouldn't want to mess with him. And they talk about you, is that what you mean? No. Okay, what do you mean then? <laughs> Next question. No, hit me, I, I'm just... So like, somebody's <laughs> like, oh shit, he's got 20 pairs of shoes that go for a good amount of money, I'm gonna rob him and potentially shoot him in the fucking leg. Just be safe. Yeah, it's always been, bro. Right, people were people were killing people over Concords back in 2011. I remember people were fighting each other over raging bulls. Right. So it's like it doesn't matter what you're. <laughs> yeah, bro. They're fucking each other over raging bulls. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't matter when you're doing it. There's people out there that are dangerous, and you yeah. just got to be careful. I was in the the me and me and Big John behind the camera were in the slums of Chirac. We were in O Block. We literally were in O Block, and nothing happened to us. Yeah. It. But you got to be safe. You got to know what you're doing. <laughs> John, why is there a gnat? Where? <laughs> right here. Um, damn, what was, what was I going to say? Um, the fuck is there a gnat? <laughs> oh my the god. Fuck is there a gnat? That dude's got a whole samurai sword. Who's got the fucking gnat? <laughs> if I see it again, I'll end him. Come on, fucking gnats. This is some top G shit right and, here. And you wanted to talk about dangerous earlier. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, this is the danger in, in fucking with resellers, okay? So I wish you would. Come on. And I'll hit you with my katana. Continue. I, sneakers by Isaiah King and Samurai by Isaiah King. Samurai. Uh, no! Samurai sneakers, there you go. Whoa. Pick a worse name. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> um, God, I forgot what I was going to say. Do you remember exactly what I said? Because I So what exactly is the question? So is it, how is it to like build more actual? Because Shane sells to non-resellers every single day. He's Panhandle Kicks, no free promo, but shout out. Shout out yep. Panhandle Kicks. He sells crazy amounts of shoes a day to average everyday people. But... A lot of people are just now selling to a bunch of resellers. Right. And it's kind of like, it's not really reselling. You're just kind of throwing around a shoe to another person so they can Okay, sell. so there's two different types of businesses. There's a... Because I know you got a bulk buyer. Right. So there's B2B, which just stands for business to business. Yeah. So if you're selling to a reseller, your format is B2B during that sale. B2C. There's B2C. Big John behind the camera knows all about this. Yeah. Business to customer or consumer. Shane is in a B2C business. Very rarely does he do B2B. I am in a B2B business. Very rarely do I do B2C. It, the beautiful thing is to do both. If you can master both, you should do both. But you can't do both from the start perfectly. For example, for about two years, I sold only to wholesale accounts, wholesale clients and shit like that. I sold bulk. That was my thing. That's B2B. Yeah. Shane pretty much only did B2C. Now Shane dabbles in wholesale. And now I dabble in business to consumers. So me and John, the, the, the big struggle we're facing now is scaling the business to get more B2C clients and scaling the business to get more wholesale clients. Yeah. Okay. 
And so we can do both. What, what I think you should be doing, honestly, is capitalizing on your B2B customers. Or B2C, I mean, I'm sorry. You need to be selling to more people because people pay better than resellers. Yeah. And people are repeat customers. You want those local clients who every time you post, like back in the day before I did bulk buying and stuff, I used to sell to only customers. Yeah. I ran Pensacola like fucking five years ago before there was there was no other resellers. It was just me. Yeah. Like I didn't even know that, that other resellers were going to be a thing. Like I thought I was the only guy that was going to do it. And so I had people that would be like, oh, every time you get a nine and a half in, let me know what you got. Every time I got a nine and a half, I'd send them my nine and a half. I'll take it. They didn't even give a fuck what it was. They'll take it. They'll buy it. You need those kind of people. Yeah. Because you, you need that guy that says, I need a size 13 shoes. What you got? Boom. Here's what I got. Okay. okay. Also, my man, why the fuck aren't you on eBay? I am on eBay. Not heavy, though. I'm still trying to get my own account. I was selling on my grandma's account, but I'm, I'm trying to get How old are you? 20. Okay. You should have an account by the end of tonight, and you should be putting pairs on it. Okay. Okay. You need to you, you need to get pairs on eBay. eBay has been like the number one growth factor for my business. Me and John will tell you has been eBay. That that is one reason why I do like eBay because it brings you it brings customers to you. Right. So you. you need to be focusing on buying for these shops, buying from these shops, buying from locals, selling on eBay, selling on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and also you have to think, bro. These people that are coming in and out of Panama City that you end up meeting that you end up selling shoes to, like. They can be long-term customers. They just need to be online customers at that point. Yeah. You have to get your social media out there. You, you have to do better on social media, bro. Yeah. You have to make content. You have to produce shit. You have to post your pairs more. You have to get more creative. We're at the point now where everybody can take a piece of fucking grass and take a picture on it. You have to get more creative. Yeah. Okay? And you have to fucking lock down these customers. And I call bullshit on the fact that Panama City is not big enough for you to find a bunch of customers. I call bullshit. Because there's two shops there. Yeah. There are definitely local customers. There is a lot of local customers that go through Pier Park, but Pier Park is one of the most, uh, I'd say, I looked it up, and it was like the 13th visited place in all of Florida. I know, but, do okay, are there locals that buy from those shops, yes or no? I would say yes. Do those shops charge a lot? Some of them, yes. Some of them don't. You need to be, Somewhat, you need yes. to have better prices, better sneakers, and better customer service. Okay. You need to be killing it out there, putting up fucking flyers, stickers, handing out business cards, making content, doing shows, everything. You need to be out here in Pensacola doing don't shows. Think that, don't think that business, handing out business card shit is cliche or something that people Fuck no. used to do back in the day. Even though social media is a big thing, bro, hand out business cards to fucking everybody, bro. You yeah. need to be like promoting yourself heavy. And you need to stop. Listen, there's, I will, ha I will say, you need to stop buying shit that's going to sit. Stop buying bullshit that's going to sit. Just because a shoe is cheap doesn't mean you should buy it. Because now we're in a recession, which isn't that big of a deal. But a Gator, a white Gatorade 6 that you keep buying for some reason. I, I don't know. They just, they move some, for some reason they move for Maybe me. they move for you. They don't they fucking move, move easy for me. For me. I oh, buy them. No. They do not move for we me. You can move the green ones. Yeah. The I move the white ones all day because okay. I think Panama City, it's not about really... I don't think people are going to go out and buy a reverse mocha Travis Scott. Hell no. I think everybody in Panama City's looking for the more budget-friendly, and that's kind of where I'm coming at for people is that they're looking for the more budget-friendly. Yes, I got mocha ones right there. I got St. John Dunks. But I think people um, – one reason people uh, people love buying from me, and I've, ha I've said this – a customer has said this to me. They were like, dude, I love buying from you. Your prices – are budget friendly, it's not breaking my bank account, and you're still making money. And I said, great, good, awesome. Okay, well, you need to just do more of that. You need to buy stuff that's going to move, though. John, give me five shoes off the top of your head that fly. That fly? UNC 4, White Oreo 4, High Green 3, Cardinal 3, Georgetown 3. Stuff like that, you want to you buy a lot of that. Other stuff, though, for example, like a White Gatorade 6. and Don't Al touch Bordeaux 6s. Don't touch hair sixes. And if you're going to, you need to get them for 70 bucks, 80 bucks, and sell them for 120 super quick like that. That's the kind of stuff you want to be putting on eBay. But you need to buy stuff that's going to move fast and move quickly. Fire Red 4s, Playoff 12s, Royalty 12s. Think about the stuff that people genuinely are going to wear on a consistent basis. How often do you think someone's going to wear a fucking Brotherhood? It's hard to wear. Yeah. How often would somebody wear a Playoff 12? A lot. It's black and white. You know what I mean? It goes with stuff. 
playoff 12, buy playoff 12, buy stuff like that that's going to move quick for you. Me and John and like Shane, for example, Coastal Kicks, we all have the luxury now of buying some of those more harder to move shoes because we have the eyes on our pairs. Yeah. We have the customers for it and we have the ability to wait because we have the capital to wait. But you don't have the capital to let that shit sit. So you have to buy stuff that's going to move really quickly and you have to be posting it everywhere at once. Everywhere. Making vi like, bro, when I was starting out like you, I was sitting in my garage. I had a, I had a setup behind me, not this nice, but a bunch of bullshit behind me making videos. Every shoe I got in, hey guys, today we're going to take a look at these Gatorade ones. Boom, we show them off. Show the Gatorade ones. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do a review. Make them really cool. And then boom, they'd sell. you got to be making content, bro. Making videos. Talking about the shoes. Showing off the shoes. Yeah. Everything. You need to be posting everything everywhere all the time. I know you've heard it before, but consistency is key. Yeah. Literally. 100%. Consistency is key. You have to be everywhere. And you have to keep promoting yourself. Every day that you post, it reminds somebody that you're there. You know what I mean? Yeah. You And you have to do... You, not only you don't have a location either, so you have to do all the social media shit that the shops are doing and then do it better than them. Yeah. Because you have to give somebody a reason to shop with you instead of a shop. You know what I mean? Yeah, so basically just be like, hey, I got better prices than your average shop does. Yeah, and I'm going to show, I'll come to you. What you want, I'll come to you. I'll fight. What do you need? Also, bro, why you're not selling at events, I don't know. Well, thing is with, I would go to I would go to Atlanta and all, and only thing and stuff like that. The only reason I'm I would be vending at our local events is because I'm an epileptic and a diabetic. My parents are very very like tight on me going right. places. They're they're even tight on me even coming over here. But they're like, okay, he's he's nearly a full grown adult. He right. can almost drink all that kind of stuff. And I respect that, and I have sympathy for that. But like you said, you have to toe the line here a little bit. You are getting older. You are Are you able to, to deal with those and things and control them yourselves? Yes. Right. So you just have to have that conversation of like, okay, if it's not now, when am I going to do this so I can start setting these goals to grow my business, right? Yeah. Because if you were going to go to college, you'd have to go away. Yeah. And if you're going to go work like a bigger job, you'd have to potentially go away. Yeah. This is that. This is that opportunity. So... Because I would be in Tampa, Orlando, Miami, Atlanta, you name it, all that kind of stuff. I would be there. I would, I'd love to go to Atlanta. Okay. At like every well, until other. you can get those things situated, make sure that you lock down and kill the things that you're doing right now. Okay. Make sure you do everything you can do here perfect. And then when the opportunity comes up, you need to start vending at events. That's how you get those connections, too, to start selling to people everywhere else. That's how you make a fuck ton of money in one weekend. And then you really can start growing, buying, buying, killing it heavy. That's how you make the connections to get the resellers to sell you pairs in the future. Okay. Events are key for networking. My, my life would be totally different if I was not able to go to sneaker events because the amount of people and networks and, and things that I've created from going to those events, the brand I've created from going to those events, is, is it's so valuable. Yeah, because I've watched your YouTube videos and people are like, oh, shit. Like, oh, I follow you on Instagram and, like, love your shit and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And that's the, that's the brand I'm talking about. You have to create that for yourself. Yeah. So, what are our takeaways from today? Give me a few. Uh, just log down on Facebook Marketplace, eBay, Snapchat, Instagram, name it, whatever. Uh, you said, um, don't use credit. Use debit to start with. Maybe use credit whenever you're like top Way down top the line. Game. And then just go to like shops and then just yes. be like, hey, I need your pairs and all that kind of stuff. I sell me pairs. I need steals. Text every single person that you know that has a size yes. eight through whatever. Yes. And as fast as you and can. And then sell you them. also need to be half of reselling is sneakers, half of it's business. Yeah. If you don't ever elevate your game on business, you're never gonna become a better reseller. Because reseller, that's like saying fucking that's like it, it's like anything. I could be a wood I could make tables, right? I could be the best table maker in the world, but if I don't know how to sell tables, what the fuck is the point? I yeah. can't, I'm not making any money. I could be the best table maker in the whole world. Yeah. But if I make the best tables and nobody knows about them, I'm not going to make any money. Yeah. You need to start educating yourselves, reading books, watching YouTube videos, consuming Gary Vee like it's fucking crack cocaine, <laughs> watching all kinds of value tainment on YouTube, reading books, reading Dave Ramsey books, reading Grant Cardone, Jordan Belfort, learning their stories, learning how they did it. Watch interviews with Mark Cuban. Watch interviews with all these people. And really learn, get down to the fucking fundamentals of business. Learn how business works. Because once you know how business works, it doesn't matter if you're selling shoes, socks, cupcakes, or fucking Christmas tree ornaments. 
it doesn't matter. Once you know the fundamentals, you can just pour gasoline on any of it because you have the knowledge to do so. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to add value to our customers. We're going to make lots of content. We're going to be posting everywhere on every platform for buying and selling. Okay. We're going to brand ourselves. We're going to kill it. We're going to really figure out what is Crispy Crips. Crispy Crips. Crispy Crips. <laughs> what is Crispy Crips? <laughs> what is Crispy <laughs> What is Crispy Kicks? Who is he? What does he do? What's he all about? What's his mission? We want to lock down our brand, and I can help you with all the specifics of that more off camera one day, or on camera, we'll figure it out. Posting everywhere, figure out exactly how you want to structure your business. Reach out to shops, say, hey, not only can I buy from you guys, let me know what you guys have for sale, I'll also buy for you guys. Let me know what you guys need, I can source it for you. Yeah, because it, the thing is, I, my, met, like, my motto and my thing is for people, I don't want people to be like, Oh shit, he's just another reseller. Right. I want to be the friendly local reseller. Spider Man. Yeah, basically like a <laughs> basically like Spider Man for shoes. Yeah. Be like, hey, I want to be your friendly local reseller, budget friendly, not gonna break your bank account, right. and it's gonna make you look. Fresher and then than as you go on, you elevate, you buy more expensive pairs, you get the hype stuff. But right now, we're trying to get the most bang for our buck with the capital we have. So yeah. we're buying. We're buying hundred to two hundred dollar deals. We're flipping them within one to two days because we got them. On, they're everywhere. Yeah. If you have them posted everywhere, you're flipping them, bro. Yeah, like everybody's got a bread eleven. And you can be buying stuff, selling it wholesale to me. You can be buying stuff, selling it wholesale to Awoken Kicks, yeah. Coastal Kicks. So don't sleep on the fucking the ten twenty dollar thirty dollar flips that you're making instant money because that's what I do for a living, bro. Yeah. The quick ten twenty dollar flips is how I made my money. That's how I got to where I am today. Do not sleep on that. Bulk selling is the shit. Don't sleep on it. Grow your bulk shit. Try to get pairs that you can flip to, to shops and resellers, but also grow your B to B or B to C customers because you need those people because they're gonna help grow your brand and they're gonna be there when you need them. They're always gonna want shoes. Everybody's yeah. always gonna want the shoes. Yeah, and I feel like shoes are always gonna be a necessity. Like everybody's always gonna need shoes. I don't think reselling is gonna be gone. Everybody's always gonna need a shoe. John, come light the stogie. Where's John behind the camera? All right. You got anything else for me? Um, Cheers, my friend. How are we looking on time over there? 19 minutes. All right. I think that got most of the stuff out of the way, to be honest with you. Okay. I think we basically got that down the basics right. and how to knock out left and right. Yes, how to get started. And any yeah. other questions you have that are the nitpicking, the details, all the little shit, the social media, the how to make the videos, you text me. I'll help you figure it out. Yeah. We'll hop on a Zoom call. We'll hop on a FaceTime. We'll figure it out. Okay. All right. You want to say anything to the camera? How's it, Shop. Feel, to, how's it feel to be the first guest of uh, Cigars and Sneakers, yeah. bro? You're the first guest. This is the first ever episode. Special. Special. You got anything you want to do? No free promo, but also free promo? Free promo. No. It's not a no promo. It's a free promo. Shop Crispy Kicks on Instagram. Sell me pairs. Need pairs. Buying pairs. Selling pairs. Give me. All right, you guys. Um... I'm still learning. We're still figuring things out. This is going to be the first episode of Cigars and Sneakers. Only going to get better. Only going to get better. We've only got one camera angle right now. Pretty soon we'll have a couple showing everybody's faces and stuff like that. Um, if you guys have any specific content or any types of guests you want to see, please let me know. Super appreciate my man Blaine, All a.k.a. Right. Shop Crispy Kicks, for coming on today. Make sure to give him a follow on Instagram. I'm going to have his handle down below. Like the video. If there's anything different, better, anything you guys want to see, drop it in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. See you guys in the next episode of Cigars and Sneakers. Love y'all.